Okay, so how do you transfer your reference photo to your paper or your canvas or whatever your art surface is? I've used the same way for the past 25 years. I've not had to change it in any way. So stay tuned and I'll walk you straight through it. Now, before I show you absolutely everything I know about transferring your reference photo, I notice virtually all of you, although you're subscribed, don't actually get notifications because to get them, you've got to click the subscription button and then you'll see the little area to click for notifications. Without that, all of the free videos that I'm putting out with lots and lots of content, all for free, you don't get notified about. So if you want to know when my new videos have come out, please click the notification. So here's the super cute red uh, squirrel, even though he looks a bit grey. Let me show you the actual reference photo first so you get a better idea of what I'm going to be working towards. In the um, winter time, I would assume, they go more of a grey colour. In the summertime, this red goes all over. It's kind of like a shedding of the coat. These squirrels, the baby squirrels I saw in Finland, they were tiny. They literally fit into the palm of your hand very easily and they wouldn't be very tall at all. So that's what I want to do next. And I'm going to take the demo extremely, extremely slowly, especially for beginners. Now it may look a bit <coughs> complicated, but let's take it step by step. Keep in mind always Wildlife art, animal art is never super easy if you want it to be realistic, okay? I'm not going to go probably overly detailed on this. Stick with me. It may look like it's too difficult. We've got to start somewhere. And the place I am going to start is on the transfer of the image because it's an area that's simple to do. It's, uh, I've been doing it for 25 years the same way, whether I've been doing oil paintings really, or pastel drawings. You can do it in many ways, so you can sketch it out. That obviously leaves the chance of you going wrong with your sketch. Not a problem on oil paintings, we're going to be going over all that anyway. But on pastel drawings, I don't really want to be erasing much on the paper. It can leave a mark. So another alternative, if you want to freehand sketch it, freehand it on a piece of paper and then trace it onto the pastel paper. Or you can use a grid method or anything like that. And I've got another video showing a different way than what I'm going to show you now, which is basically take a reference photo, put pastel on the back or graphite. Okay, so you could do it with a pastel there or you can get a graphite pencil and just rub it sideways over it all and then you trace on the top or the easiest way of all is to get graphite paper okay so this is the one this is the brand i've been using for a long long time and the reason is it works very easily works well and it's pretty much the cheapest and i can get it anyway in the uk i can get it in places like the range and get it online you name it i can get it okay so that's the one i use comes in black also comes in white and i'm going to show you why i would use the black or the white in this image so what have you got to do well first of all print out your drawing on cheap inkjet printer paper i don't care what the print looks like as long as i can just make out the basic shapes this is cheap inkjet paper. This is photo quality inkjet paper. It's still matte paper, it's slightly thicker. And as you can see, there's a big difference between how it looks. I never do my drawings from this type of printer paper. It's washed out. I do it from the thicker paper. And I've got a video on that as well. So why do I use this cheap paper? Well, I want it thin because I want to be able to trace through it. If I'm using thick paper, when I'm using my pen or pencil to trace, I'm going to have to push hard. That could damage the pastel matte paper underneath. And that's what I'm using here. It's what I always use, pastel matte paper. And this one is actually called light blue. It's one of my favorite papers or my favorite paper and paper color. So if you're following lots of my lessons, especially the new ones over the last couple of years, that's what you're going to see me using. 
Now, transfer paper, this is important. Two sides to it. It's usually a matte side, and then another one which is much darker and a little bit shiny. It's got kind of a waxy feel to it. Okay, that's the paper side that's going to do the transfer in. That's what we put down. So let's turn that over. Now, another thing, as I've got the paper, you may be able to pick out, notice some little marks on there. That's because I use this multiple, multiple times. Okay, you don't have to, this is not a one use throw away job. Use it multiple times. Just lift up your reference photo, bring up the transfer paper, put it down. I've got a magnetic whiteboard so I can just put my magnets on there. Make sure it's nice and flat. And then away we can go. Now, I'm going to use a pen, any pen. There's nothing special about this, just a big pen, okay? Why am I using a pen and not a pencil? Because if I use a graphite pencil, it's not going to show up. If I use a pastel pencil, it's not going to get a nice point to it. So a pen works because when I do the lines, I can see where I've gone. Now, after you've done a few strokes, lift up your paper, have a look. How dark is the line? It it doesn't need to be dark. That's more, more than enough, way more than enough. I'm going to even lighten it, okay? Your next question, how much pressure am I putting down? Just enough so you can see the marks. And that is less pressure than when I'm writing. If you're using pressure that is so hard, and you can test this out for yourself on a spare piece of paper, okay? If you use the pressure that's so hard, I don't know if you're going to see this, but I wonder if I could just skim a bit of pastel over the top. Yeah, see those indentations in there? If you're using pressure that's so hard it indents the pastel mat, you will put in on way, way, way too much pressure. Okay, way too much pressure. There should be no indentation on the pastel mat. If you're pushing that hard and the line is not coming out, you've probably got your um, graphite paper, your transfer paper the wrong way around. Absolutely, you should feel no indentation on the pastel matte paper. This paper is really robust, it's quite hard, but if you push super hard with your pen, it will mark. I see people online using things like styluses, sharp pointy styluses when they're doing this transfer. I don't see the point of that. Literally the point, no pun intended, because you can't see where your mark's going. Why even use that? I just don't get it. You want to be able to see your marks, where you've been and where you've got to go on top of your reference photo, because the only thing that's going to happen with this photo after this, I'll use the back of it to write on so I don't waste it. And then after that, it'll go in the bin. We'll go to recycling. So you don't have to be precious with this transfer paper. It's there just for a job. And all I'm going to do is just go around, in this case, all the dark areas. And then I'll show you why I use the white transfer paper sometimes. Don't always use it. Now, how many marks do I need to put down? How much detail do I need? If you're a complete beginner, you may want to put more detail down. If you're confident with your drawing ability as well, you could probably just do the eye, perhaps the ears, the, the wood, a few points here and there where the mouth is, you know, really, really basic. Don't need to put much down at all because if you can draw quite well and you're good with proportions, you don't need a lot of guidance. If you're a complete beginner, you may want a lot of guidance. So in this case, I'll put down a fair amount just so you can see what it looks like. Now, if you want to, you can put a few marks in just to show which direction the fur is going to go in. Okay, don't, don't go doing all of them. There's no point. We're going to be putting pastel on top of all this. Now, if I was doing a graphite drawing, I do exactly the same. If I was doing an oil painting, I do exactly the same. This part of the technique 
wouldn't change. Right. Now, thinking about why I would use a black paper, why I would use a white paper. Well, transfer paper that is. Well, think of it like this. If I was using black pastel mat or anthracite pastel mat because it comes in all different colors and I was using the black transfer paper, obviously the marks wouldn't show up. If I was using the white transfer paper on black, it would show up. And vice versa, if I'm using a light colored pastel mat, well, I want the dark transfer paper. Otherwise, if I had a white transfer uh, pastel mat and I was using white transfer paper, it wouldn't show up, obviously. Okay, makes sense, but until you know why I do it, you may not have thought of that yourself. Okay, I know I didn't when I was first starting. Draw in. Just put in a couple of indications of these. As I said, it's a beginner lesson. Let me put a few dot, dot on the ends because that'll make a little mark as well. And I can use that to draw my box around so I know where the edge of my page is. Right, so why would I use white transfer paper? Let me show you. Let's pick this magnet up so I can keep my drawing in the right place. But get rid of the black pastel mat. So I wanted that to stay exactly as it was, okay? If I had cut a little bit of extra paper around the top, the printer paper, I could have had my magnets up there. Didn't think of it at the time. I've only done this probably a thousand times. You would have thought I could have thought of that. Right, white transfer paper. This is quite a big sheet. Once again, backside, mat side. Okay, so that's a way to remember it. Backside is the mat side. The shinier, waxy side, that's the transfer side. So let's flip it around. Sorry about the noise, no doubt it's sounding loud on the mic. Scoot that underneath. Magnets down, holding it in place, it's nice and flat. Here we go again. Still use the black pen. Let's do a few strokes. Let's have a look. That's not showing up much at all. This paper, I need to push a bit harder. Not very hard though, right? Just a little bit harder. Let's have a look. That's fine. You only need to be able to just see the marks. Now, this is why I use the white transfer paper. Because when I've got areas that need to be very light, Hold it in place and move back here. Then if I'd had a black line going down there and I'm using my white pastels to go over the top, there's an excellent chance that you're going to see the black marks through it. So that's why I would use the white transfer paper. So up here, it's not essential. The other way of doing it is to do your black marks and then use a kneaded eraser and um, just lift most of that graphite, transfer graphite off so you can barely see it. So I'll be white around there as well and the top of this log white there. Doesn't matter if I put some white in where the dark's going to be, I'll be going over all of it. Don't worry about the eyes so much, right. Let's have a final look. I'll hold it in place down the bottom. Have a look. That's perfectly fine. Looks a bit like a rabbit now. And um, that's perfectly fine. I don't need to go any darker or any lighter. And that's the transfer done. There's no marks. There's no indentations, I mean, on there. So what if I wanted to make something lighter? Well, this is a kneaded eraser. And it's basically blue tack. That's what we call it in the UK. Or well, in fact, this may well be blue tack. It's difficult to tell sometimes after I've had them a couple of years. This is how you keep it nice and clean. You just keep rolling it. Okay. And then if you want to lift some of the pastel off, you can just push it in and lift it like that. 
you can rub it a bit and drag it down a little. Okay. So if I thought this area was too dark, I can just go like that. And you see it's lifting the colour off. It's just lightening it all. You see, there's the charcoal, or graphite, sorry, on there. It would work for charcoal as well, the same way. It's as simple as that. And you can use it just like an eraser as well. So you just keep your page clean too. And whether or not I'm going to put a background in on this one, I'm not sure yet. But there, that's an easy way, super easy way to do your tracing or your transfer, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same. And now I'm ready to make a start with my pastels. Oh, one thing I could do, I could get my ruler and let's just pick up a white pencil. This is why I put those dots there. Always with pastel, extremely light pressure. Don't need to go pushing hard. That's one of the beauties of it. It doesn't make your hands ache because basically we're just using the weight of the pencil all the time. Right by here, let's do this sideways one. Now by going with a white pencil instead of a black, I won't get a dark line if I did want to put a light background in. Just this last one at the bottom. Okay, so magnets back in position. I'm ready to get started with the pastels. If you're struggling to draw animals or to improve your art, I can share with you the techniques I've learned over 25 years so you can avoid frustration and trial and error and start to enjoy drawing and creating straight away. Hi, my name is Jason Morgan. I'm a professional artist and I would love to be your guide on your unique art journey. I've fallen in love with pastels and I'm sure you will too. There's really no other medium that has the vibrancy and colour intensity and the ability to put light over dark. That's an absolute game changer for the animal artist. Now on my channel, you get immediate access to hundreds of hours of lessons and demonstrations and you go completely at your own pace. There's absolutely no rushing in my art channel and lessons. Think of it like a video library. You pick the video you like, something that really takes your fancy, and you take as long as you want to complete it. Or, alternatively, you can watch my videos, learn the techniques, and apply them to the subjects that really inspire you. And you also get new reference photos each month. They're copyright free. You can use them in your art, sell your art, no worries whatsoever. Many of my artists came to me with little to no art ability whatsoever and they're truly amazed with what they're now creating. You could be doing that as well. Now don't think age is a problem, you're really never too old to start learning and enjoying art and many of my students are 40, 50, 60, 70, even 80 years of age. Now my channel is about much more than lessons and techniques. You also get access to my secret, private Facebook group and that's full of members that's literally grown up with my channel. They're super supportive and kind. They come from all over the world. So if you've got any questions, you can rest assured there's going to be someone there really quick with a solution to your problems. Now, with my channel, you're not tied into any contract. You can literally come and go as you please. You can go up tiers, you can go down tiers, whatever you want. And there's a tier and a price to suit literally any pocket. Now I've been doing art lessons for many, many years and I really pride myself on trying to create the absolute best lessons and demonstrations I possibly can. I really hope to see you there soon so you can start your art journey and I can't wait to see what you can achieve.